Today is June the 6th. How's the Book of Kings organized? Let's find out together as we read 1 Kings 14 to 16. Up to this point in the Book of Kings, we've followed the story of one dynasty. David, Solomon, and uh, Solomon's son, Rehoboam. But Rehoboam brought about the split of the kingdom into north and south. Ten tribes to the north, two to the south. The two to the south are Judah and Simeon. Simeon had been absorbed by the tribe of Judah by this point. Uh, the ten tribes to the north now are following Jeroboam. So when you're writing a history of a, a two nations like that, what do you do? Well, the book of Kings follows roughly chronologically. Take a look, for example, uh, chapter uh, 14. Uh, we begin to see uh, what happened with um, Jeroboam as king. Jeroboam uh, rules for a total of 21 years. And while he is ruling, uh, there are three kings in Judah. So, be very careful when you read through these passages to see, is it talking about a king of Israel, the ten tribes to the north, or the king of Judah, the two tribes to the south? We start with uh, Jeroboam. Uh, Jeroboam uh, is uh, prophesied to die. Uh, the prophet Ahijah tells Jeroboam's wife, to communicate to Jeroboam, since apparently Ahijah and Jeroboam are not on speaking terms, that uh, his kingdom will not last long. After he dies, uh, uh, his kingdom will disappear. Well, chapter 14, verse 21, we see Rehoboam in Judah. Rehoboam rules for a total of 17 years. Then in chapter 15, verse 1, Abijam, Rehoboam's son, begins to rule in Judah. Abijam rules for three years. And then Asa, Abijah's son, rules for a total of 41 years. Now, if you look at chapter 15, verse 11, Asa did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. So now we have a second element in this organization. It's roughly chronological, jumping back and forth between the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. But also, as soon as the king is introduced, we're told he was good or he was bad. Let's go back, for example, to chapter 14, verse 22, in talking about Rehoboam. During Rehoboam's reign, the people of Israel did what was evil in the Lord's sight. So Rehoboam wasn't a good king. Chapter 15, verse 3, Abijam, Rehoboam's son, committed the same sins as his father before him, and he wasn't faithful. But Asa was. Asa did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. Uh, by the end of chapter 15, we see that uh, Jehoshaphat, Asa's son, becomes the next king. But because Asa ruled for 41 years, we actually flip back now to Judah. And we look, uh, we have an extended uh, uh passage about kings in Judah. Nadab, Jeroboam's son, rules. He only rules for two years, then he dies. Then Basha, the, the general who killed uh, Nadab, uh, begins to rule. It's a second dynasty in the northern kingdoms. This is one of the big differences between the north and the south. The southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah, has only one dynasty 
David's dynasty. The northern kingdom has, I believe, nine different dynasties over a period of 20 years. Basha serves for 24 years. His son Elah serves for two years. Elah is killed by one of his generals. That man's name is Zimri. Zimri rules for seven days. Omri and Tibni are two generals. They each, basically, they set fire to Zimri's house. He dies in the fire. Um, then a certain number of the tribes follow Omri, and a certain number of the tribes follow Tibni. This goes on for six years. Eventually, Omri rules. Omri, if we look at literature outside of the Old Testament, was one of the best kings that the northern kingdom ever had. In fact, in some places, we see the kingdom of Israel simply referred to as the Omride dynasty, the dynasty of Omri, for the rest of its existence, even though it wasn't Omri's dynasty. By the end of chapter 16, Omri dies, and his son Ahab rules in his place. Enjoy here today as we flip back and forth between Judah and Israel. 1 Kings 14-16, through 16, New Living Translation 1 Kings 14 At that time, Jeroboam's son Ahijah became very sick. So Jeroboam told his wife, Disguise yourself so that no one will recognize you as my wife. Then go to the prophet Ahijah at Shiloh, the man who told me I would become king. Take him a gift of ten loaves of bread, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and ask him what will happen to the boy. So Jeroboam's wife went to Ahijah's home at Shiloh. He was an old man now and could no longer see. But the Lord told Ahijah, Jeroboam's wife will come here, pretending to be someone else. She will ask you about her son, for he is very sick. Give her the answer I gave you. So when Ahijah heard her footsteps at the door, he called out, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why are you pretending to be someone else? Then he told her, I have bad news for you. Give your husband, Jeroboam, this message from the Lord, the God of Israel. I promoted you from the ranks of the common people and made you ruler over my people Israel. I ripped the kingdom away from the family of David and gave it to you. But you have not been like my servant David, who obeyed my commands and followed me with all his heart and always did whatever I wanted. You have done more evil than all who lived before you. You have made other gods for yourself and have made me furious with your golden calves. And since you have turned your back on me, I will bring disaster on your dynasty and will destroy every one of your male descendants, slave and free alike, anywhere in Israel. I will burn up your royal dynasty as one burns up trash until it's all gone. The members of Jeroboam's family who die in the city will be eaten by dogs, and those who die in the field will be eaten by vultures. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then Ahijah said to Jeroboam's wife, Go on home, and when you enter the city, the child will die. All Israel will mourn for him and bury him. He is the only member of your family who will have a proper burial, for this child is the only good thing that the Lord, the God of Israel, sees in the entire family of Jeroboam. In addition, the Lord will raise up a king over Israel who will destroy the family of Jeroboam. This will happen today, even now. Then the Lord will shake Israel like a reed, whipped out in a stream. He will uproot the people of Israel from this good land that he gave their ancestors and will scatter them beyond the Euphrates River, for they have angered the Lord with the Asherah poles they have set up for worship. He will abandon Israel because Jeroboam sinned and made Israel sin along with him. So Jeroboam's wife returned to Tirzah, and the child died as he walked through the door of their home. And all Israel buried him and mourned for him, as the Lord had promised through the prophet Ahijah. The rest of the events of Jeroboam's reign, including all his wars and how he ruled, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. Jeroboam reigned in Israel twenty-two years. When Jeroboam died, his son Nadab became the next king. 
Meanwhile, Rehoboam, son of Solomon, was king in Judah. He was 41 years old when he became king, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city the Lord had chosen from among all the tribes of Israel as a place to honor his name. Rehoboam's mother was Nehemiah, the Ammonite woman. During Rehoboam's reign, the people of Judah did what was evil in the Lord's sight, provoking his anger with their sin, for it was even worse than that of their ancestors. For they also built for themselves pagan shrines and set up sacred pillars and Asherah poles on every high hill and under every green tree. There were even male and female shrine prostitutes throughout the land. The people imitated the detestable practices of the pagan nations the Lord had driven from the land ahead of the Israelites. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam's reign, King Shishak of Egypt came up and attacked Jerusalem. He ransacked the treasuries of the Lord's temple and the royal palace. He stole everything, including all the gold shields Solomon had made. King Rehoboam later replaced them with bronze shields as substitutes and entrusted them to the care of the commanders of the guard who protected the entrance to the royal palace. Whenever the king went to the temple of the Lord, the guards would also take the shields and then return them to the guard room. The rest of the events of Rehoboam's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. There was a constant war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. When Rehoboam died, he was buried among his ancestors in the city of David. His mother was Naamah, an Ammonite woman. Then his son Abijam became the next king. 1 Kings 15 Abijam began to rule over Judah in the eighteenth year of Jeroboam's reign in Israel. He reigned in Jerusalem three years. His mother was Maacah, the granddaughter of Absalom. He committed the same sins as his father before him, and he was not faithful to the Lord his God, as his ancestor David had been. But for David's sake, the Lord his God allowed his descendants to continue ruling, shining like a lamp, and he gave Abijam a son to rule after him in Jerusalem. For David had done what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, and had obeyed the Lord's commands throughout his life, except in the affair concerning Uriah the Hittite. There was war between Abijam and Jeroboam throughout Abijam's reign. The rest of the events of Abijam's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. There was constant war between Abijam and Jeroboam. When Abijam died, he was buried in the city of David. Then his son Asha became the next king. Asha began to rule over Judah in the twentieth year of Jeroboam's reign in Israel. He reigned in Jerusalem forty-one years. His grandmother was Maacah, the granddaughter of Absalom. Asha did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, as his ancestor David had done. He banished the male and female shrine prostitutes from the land and got rid of all the idols his ancestors had made, even deposed his grandmother Maacah from her position as queen mother because she had made an obscene Asherah pole. He cut down her obscene pole and burned it in the Kidron Valley. Although the pagan shrines were not removed, Asha's heart remained completely faithful to the Lord throughout his life. He brought into the temple of the Lord the silver and gold and the various items that he and his father had dedicated. There was constant war between King Asha of Judah and King Bashan of Israel. King Bashan of Israel invaded Judah and fortified Ramah in order to prevent anyone from entering or leaving King Asha's territory in Judah. Asha responded by removing all the silver and gold that was left in the treasuries of the temple of the Lord and the royal palace. He sent it with some of his officials to Ben-Hadad, son of Tabrimon, son of Hezion, the king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus along with this message. Let there be a treaty between you and me, like the one between your father and my father. See, I am sending you a gift of silver and gold. Break your treaty with King Bashan of Israel, so that he will leave me alone. Ben-Hadad agreed to King Asha's request and sent the commanders of his army to attack the towns of Israel. They conquered the towns of Aijon, Dan, Abel-Beth Meacah, and all Kenirith, and all the land of Naphtali. As soon as Baasha of Israel heard what was happening, he abandoned his project of fortifying Ramah and withdrew to Tirzah. Then King Asa sent an order throughout Judah. 
requiring that everyone without exception help carry away the building stones and timbers that Baesha had been using to fortify Rama. Asa used these materials to fortify the town Giba in Benjamin and the town of Mispha. The rest of the events of Asha's reign, the extent of his power, everything he did, and the names of the cities he built, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. In his old age, his feet became diseased. When Asha died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then Jehoshaphat, Asha's son, became the next king. Nadab, son of Jeroboam, began to rule over Israel in the second year of King Asha's reign in Judah. He reigned in Israel two years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight and followed the example of his father, continuing the sins that Jeroboam had led Israel to commit. Then Baasha, son of Ahijah, from the tribe of Issachar, plotted against Nadab and assassinated him, while he and the Israelite army were laying siege on the Philistine town of Gibeathon. Baasha killed Nadab in the third year of King Aisha's reign in Judah, and became the next king of Israel. He immediately slaughtered all the descendants of King Jeroboam, so not one of the royal family was left, just as the Lord had promised concerning Jeroboam by the prophet Ahijah from Shiloh. This was done because Jeroboam had provoked the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, by the sins he had committed and the sins he had led Israel to commit. The rest of the events of Nadab's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. There was constant war between King Asha of Judah and King Baeshan of Israel. Baeshan, son of Ahijah, began to rule over all Israel in the third year of King Asha's reign in Judah. Baasha reigned in Tizra twenty-four years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight and followed the example of Jeroboam, continuing the sins that Jeroboam had led Israel to commit. 1 Kings 16 This message from the Lord was delivered to King Baasha by the prophet Jehu, son of Hanani. I lifted you out of the dust to make you ruler of my people Israel, but you have followed the evil example of Jeroboam. You have provoked my anger by causing my people Israel to sin. So now I will destroy you and your family, just as I destroyed the descendants of Jeroboam, son of Nabat. The members of Baasha's family who died in the city will be eaten by dogs, and those who die in the field will be eaten by vultures. The rest of the events of Baasha's reign and the extent of his power are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Baasha died, he was buried in Tirzah. Then his son Elah became the next king. The message from the Lord against Baasha and his family came through the prophet Jehu, son of Hanai. It was delivered because Baasha had done what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as the family of Jeroboam had done, and also because Baasha had destroyed the family of Jeroboam. The Lord's anger was provoked by Baasha's sins. Elah, son of Baasha, began to rule over Israel in the twenty-sixth year of King Asha's reign in Judah. He reigned in the city of Tirzah for two years. Then Zimri, who commanded half of the royal chariots, made plans to kill him. One day in Tirzah, Elah was getting drunk at the home of Arza, the supervisor of the palace. Zimri walked in and struck him down and killed him. This happened in the 27th year of King Asha's reign in Judah. Then Zimri became the next king. Zimri immediately killed the entire royal family of Baasha, leaving him not even a single male child. He even destroyed distant relatives and families. So Zimri destroyed the dynasty of Baasha, as the Lord had promised through the prophet Jehu. This happened because of all the sins Baasha and his son Elah had committed, and because of the sins they led Israel to commit. They provoked the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, with their worthless idols. The rest of the events of Elah's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. Zimri began to rule over Israel in the 27th year of King Asha's reign in Judah, but his reign in Tirzah lasted only seven days. The army of Israel was then attacking the Philistine town of Gibbethon when they heard that Zimri had committed treason and had assassinated the king. That very day they chose Omri, commander of the army, as the new king of Israel. So Omri led the entire army of Israel up from Gibbethon to attack Tirzah, Israel's capital. 
when zimri saw that the city had been taken he went into the citadel of the palace and burned it down over himself and died in the flames for he too had done what was evil in the lord's sight he followed the example of jeroboam in all the sins he had committed and led israel to commit the rest of the events in zimri's reign and his conspiracy are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of israel but now the people of israel were split into two factions half the people tried to make tibni son of ginneth their king while the other half supported omri but Omri's supporters defeated the supporters of Tibni, so Tibni was killed and Omri became the next king. Omri began to rule over Israel in the thirty-first year of King Asha's reign in Judah. He reigned twelve years in all, six of them in Tizra. Then Omri bought the hill now known as Samaria. From its owner Shemer, for a hundred and fifty pounds of silver, he built a city on it and called it Samaria in honor of Shemer. But Omri did what was evil in the Lord's sight even more than any of the kings before him. He followed the example of Neoboam, son of Nebat, in all the sins he had committed and led Israel to commit. The people provoked the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, with their worthless idols. The rest of the events of Omri's reign, the extent of his power, and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Omri died, he was buried in Samaria. Then his son Ahab became the next king. Ahab, son of Omri, began to rule over Israel in the thirty-eighth year of King Asha's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria twenty-two years, but Ahab, son of Omri, did what was evil in the Lord's sight, even more than any of the kings before him. And as though it were not enough to follow the sinful example of Jeroboam, he married Jezebel, the daughter of King Ethbaal of the Sidonians, and he began to bow down in worship of Baal. First, Ahab built a temple and an altar for Baal in Samaria. Then he set up an Asherah pole. He did more to provoke the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, than any of the kings of Israel before him. It was during his reign that Hiel, a man from Bethel, rebuilt Jericho. When he laid its foundations, it cost him the life of his oldest son, Abiram. And when he completed it and set up its gates, it cost him the life of his youngest son, Segub. This all happened according to the message from the Lord concerning Jericho, spoken by Joshua, son of Nun. Scripture reading by Emily Herrera. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll ask, who were the prophets?